today we're celebrating something very important today within the life of the church. It's not on your bulletin, but it's something that I believe is going to be very uh, life-changing for our ministry here at the church. And so today, before we get started with anything else, I'd like to have Amanda Highsmith come up to the front today. Let's welcome her up here today. <laughs> so Amanda has met with the church board um, and has gotten the approval of uh, the district as well to move forward within her ministry and career within the Church of the Nazarene. And she has moved her ministerial credentials from the Kansas City District back here to Southwest Indiana. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. And so um, part of that is having her accept a position here at the church. And so um, through much prayer and much seeking of the Lord, she's decided to accept the position of being our very own pastor of prayer here at Greencastle Church of the Nazarene. Give God praise for that. The position she is taking is unpaid, but it will also help to ensure that her credentials remain here on the district. And if or when, and we hope that it's not soon, but if or when she decides uh, that she feels called to go to another uh, position of ministry within the church, that she would be able to do that uh, much in, within an easier process. And so... Currently, she is working during the day at the bank, and she will be working here at the church to help lead our congregation in developing and maintaining a prayer ministry here. And she will be in charge of helping to organize, schedule, and provide leadership for the church in all of its prayer activities. And so, um, instead of me telling you a few things, I think I'm going to turn the mic over to Amanda. And I just want to begin today by asking you a couple of things. Uh, I just want to ask you, what is uh, your testimony, and would you care to share some of your spiritual story with us today? So, I was going to either the Cloverdale Nazarene Church or this one before I even was live on the earth. So, in the womb, I was attending either Cloverdale or here. So, I grew up in this church, and I went to Indiana Wesleyan University. Got a math or not masters yet. <laughs> I got a bachelor's in Christian education and I studied intercultural studies as well. Then I moved to Kansas City and got my master's in miss missiology, which is now changed to intercultural studies. So learning how to work and witness in another country whose culture is different than ours, even religiously. Uh, because a lot of culture does affect, religion affects the culture. So um, when it was asked before if you ever got saved in a revival, I can't really answer exactly when I was saved. I just know I was in university when I was sanctified yeah. Yeah. because God just hit me and and that was when the time that I yielded everything to Him. And I changed my major to missions because he wouldn't let me sleep one night by just making me only think missions. So on that track, I worked in the Nazarene Compassionate Ministries office at the headquarters before it came to Global Ministry Center. And I just fell in love with ministry there. And I would like in the future to work in Compassionate Ministries in some capacity. Whether it is short term or long term, there's no, for me, there's no timeline for that. So I can't tell you. Amen. Amen. All right. So you told us a little bit about your story. Um, tell us a little bit about your work in missions and some of your past uh, ministry experiences. Um, so when I was in Kansas City, I did work in the nursery, and the little kids would make me fall asleep, <laughs> but it was also just because I had a medical condition as well. I wasn't sleeping well, so, so I started out with a nursery ministry, and then I was also helping with Nazarene Compassionate Ministries Child Sponsorship. Then in 2007, 
I moved to South Korea. And for the first four years, I worked at Korea Nazarene University, came home for a year, and helped at a, um, a tutoring center up near Chicago. And that was a bit of a challenge, especially financially, because it was an internship. You don't get paid much. <laughs> And my funding was running out, so I had no other choice but to go back to Korea to help teach at a different university. And then I decided, hey, kindergarten sounds fun. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say it was the worst mistake I made, but I had a very, very bad experience there. But God showed me through all of that, losing my school closed down, that was the biggest thing. And I was unemployed in another country for a few months. And God just showed me, instead of going home, see what I can do for you here. Like how I will provide for you. Let, open, let me open the doors for you. And so I stayed, even though the school I chose was not a good choice. God showed me he was there with me and he grew me and strengthened me. And even to this day, he keeps just showing me how he's there and how he will provide. Amen. Thank you, God, for it. Okay, so my last question then for you here today is, uh, tell us a little about maybe some of your future plans uh, on being the pastor of prayer here within the Green Castle Church. I would like to first just start off like teaching people a little bit of basically how to pray because sometimes it's, it's hard when you're praying you don't really know how to pray so just giving some guidance on how to start even is really good some of you don't like praying out loud because you don't feel maybe you're eloquent when you're speaking or praying out loud but i'm showing different ways to pray as well to help you Sometimes there aren't words to pray. I've screamed, I've cried, I've just sat in silence. So I'm just showing different ways of how you can even take up the posture of prayer. It doesn't have to be in words. It can be in art, dancing even, but don't worry, we won't do that either. <laughs> so that is my plan to show you is just the basics of prayer and then also for us to join together and pray for a lot of our prayer needs that we have. So I will be getting a new prayer chain together and I do have a list from 2012 <laughs> that I'm talking to the people who are on there and they want to still be there, but I have a new list as well that I will put back on the back table. If you want to fill that out with your name, phone number, or if you prefer email, that I can email everybody at once all the prayer requests that we have that day. All right, give God praise for that. Yeah. Amanda, when I was uh, beginning my start in ministry, one of the things I cherished was a Bible that was given to me. And so today, as your pastor and also as your church family, we would like to offer this wonderful NIV inline Bible for you to use. It is a nice bright red color, so it should be differentiated from all of your other Bibles. And uh, we just hope that you are able to dig into that word and to share that with others and to help draw others into the ministry of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Give God praise. Alright, Amanda, what I'm going to have you do is kind of stand in front of the Advent candle here today. And church, what I would like us to do is to, I know that you know Amanda, but I would like to also introduce and have you get to know her now as the pastor of prayer here within the church. And so what I'd like is to have us kind of gather around and just kind of shake her hand and uh, let's give her a word of encouragement here today. And if the uh, musicians would be able to play um, the family of God this morning. Let's just gather together as a family of God. Let's welcome our new pastor of prayer. 